it seemed very important from the start to have her engaged and involved and interested in the royal politics. I know those men and how they plot in their secret councils when I've been sent away. This is a long road and it's a, it's, a, it's a long learning process and you don't just get everything all at once. The events of episode two domino into everything that's gonna happen from there. Your father loves you. He chose you for his heir. We're talking about six months since Emma's death. We wanted to capture the idea that Rhaenyra, in spite of her being made heir, continuing to be the cupbearer with no real change in her life. So everyone kind of resents her and they question her and they belittle her. So it's a bit confusing, I think. She feels very small. She still has to study at her dad's feet and that doesn't mean that she has, suddenly has a voice at the council and, and I think that all that stuff is really important for the kind of gradual evolution of Rhaenyra's character. I only meant that we should at least... Perhaps uh, there's some better use for the princess's talents. Why don't you take the princess to see about the new King's Guard posting, Lord Commander? A fine idea, Your Grace. At the time that she chooses the King's Guard, it's her first thing she's assigned to. It's something that's done offhand that does influence the course of a lot of events. Sir Kristen Cole. She smartly sees, and the thing, the thing where you start to see the calculations of a future sovereign political operator is that in this time of great peace, not many of the knights that are gonna be put before you have any more than tourney experience. I choose Sir Kristen Cole. She's basically saying, I'm gonna pick the person who's gonna do the job right. My father should be defended by a man who's no real combat. Should he not? She's smarter than they think she is, and she's trying to prove it. You've got two great female characters of the story getting a scene together. We were aware that we needed to differentiate this scene from all other scenes. I understand the order of things. I'm not sure you do. The important thing for us was to look at the way the patriarchy sees and conditions women to believe that they are of lesser value and the way that women in power treat women in power. When I'm queen, I will create a new order. Oh, I wish that could be Rhaenyra. But the men of the realm already had their opportunity to appoint a ruling queen at the Great Council, and they denied it. They denied you, Princess Rhaenys. There's something in Rhaenys that actually, it perversely wants to cling to this idea that it is just that the status quo is fundamentally sexist and that the patriarchy cannot be touched. I mean, the, it, really, it's the theme of the series, um, this particular story. Rhaenys is right. She saw it happen to her at the Great Council. She sees the same thing happening in a different way to Rhaenyra. Men would sooner put the realm to the torch than see a woman ascend the Iron Throne. Viserys was kind of hoping the Daemon problem had gone away. Of course, that's not really realistic. Taking Massaria there, setting up on Dragonstone, all of it is Daemon's search to find out, you know, who he is and where his place is. This is an abomination. With every breath, you saw your name, your house, and your brother's reign. I think Rhaenyra's arrival saves probably a lot of lives, but it changes the tone. You know, it's the thing that she's been building towards the entire story, which is wanting to do something to show her mettle and show her worth as the heir to the throne. And she does it in a unique way because she's able to fly a dragon, but she's also one of the few people in the world that Daemon will listen to. She identifies with Daemon very much in that he's trying to get rise out of her father, but she also feels somehow that he has chosen to kind of get at her as well. He sees her as part of the problem, and she didn't choose to be heir. She did not wish to have something taken away from him, and I think she's venting to him as well. Your Grace, the princess has returned from Dragonstone. Dragonstone? Viserys is very protective of Rhaenyra, whereas at the same time can see the potential within her. May I sit? He sees in her his wife, and he understands that this is why she was a good choice to be made heir. They find an understanding, and actually it allows them to talk about Emma in a way that they haven't before. Without her, the Red Keep has lost a warmth, and I dare say it will never recover. It pleases me to hear you say this, to know that I'm not alone in my grief. 
The thing about being the king is it's a very callous world. My wife's only just been cremated and you're asking me who I'm going to marry and it's pressure, pressure, pressure. There is this misunderstanding which is Viserys believing that he has to get married and he has to explain this to Rhaenyra and Rhaenyra saying, whatever you choose to do, I'm okay with it. Although what she should have said is as long as it's not my best friend. Alison's journey is that she's holding space for the king while he mourns. She does it out of kindness. She doesn't go intentionally to court the king. She cares and she has seen her father go through the same grief that Viserys is going through. For Viserys, it's having someone who genuinely cares without having an ulterior motive of trying to get closer to him. And for Alison, it's just someone to, to be with where she feels comfortable and not overlooked. We really needed to take our time to show not only the courtship of Viserys and Alison, but also the the political maneuverings to, to make it happen and to understand that Viserys is choosing her kind of against his own self-interest in many ways. I intend to marry the Lady Alice and Hightower. You can't tell every story, so where are you going to iris in and focus your storytelling time? It felt like Viserys' eventual decision to choose Alicent next was a big one, as that's going to have so many repercussions down the line.